Okay, welcome. So we will continue with Schottky junctions. If you recall in the last class we had introduced why metal contacts are very important, why are, what are the two types of contact you can form with semiconductor and depending on the application you need both type of contacts and metal contact is very very crucial to measuring devices, any device to bo wire bonding devices and packaging and so on. Okay, So metal contacts are very critical and we that is why we are trying to understand the metal semiconductor contact. So towards the end of the class we had introduced the, the, band, the band diagrams of metal semiconductor and we tried to equalize the Fermi level. We showed that in an equilibrium you form a Schottky barrier uh, and there is a depletion width and then there is a built in potential. I told you that because of the barrier it is difficult for electrons to move across that is why you get a non-linear sort of a Schottky contact that we call. In the reverse bias the you know the metals the electrons from metals to semiconductor they have find it very difficult. In the forward bias the electrons from semiconductor to metal they progressively increase uh, you know as they move across because you reduce the barrier just like in a PN junction it is just like in a PN junction okay. So today we shall do a bit of a derivation of the depletion with the built in potential maybe the current equation and also how do we make an ohmic contact and so on okay. Uh, there is a lot of things actually in metal semiconductor junction. So let us come to the whiteboard and from the last you know the last slide that we had shown here. So uh, if you recall from the last uh, lecture if you uh, have a semiconductor metal junction in equilibrium this is your everywhere the Fermi level is the same in equilibrium but there is a, a barrier here okay and then there is a depletion. So what happens is that I told you this is a, a barrier short key barrier height from the metal Fermi level to the tip of the conduction band here this is conduction band right this is valence band and then there is a depletion that has formed which is this WD and in the depletion there are no carriers only positively charged, charged ions are there because the mobile electrons have basically come to the metal to equalize the Fermi level if you remember from the last class. There is also a field in this region this region also has a field because there is a band in the conduction band and Fermi, uh, the valence band right. And then beyond this part there are no fields here this is neutral region okay the bands are flat the bands are flat and then there is no field here okay there is no field here okay. So this is what we had learned here and then of course another thing we told you is that this is the, the built in potential that is formed the built in potential can be given by the metals and the semiconductor work function difference right. And if you apply a forward bias which means of course when you apply forward bias or reverse bias there will be some current maybe large current maybe small current that is a different thing. But the moment you apply a forward bias which means you are applying a positive bias to the metal then what will happen is that it will attract electrons from the semiconductor it will attract electrons from the semiconductor two things that will happen is that one though your depletion width will become narrow your depletion width will become narrower okay. And then secondly your uh, your bands will rise up like this okay. So your effective voltage that you are dropping here will reduce by QVBI minus QVA where A is the applied voltage. So the depletion reduces the barrier reduces so more currents will flow okay um, we will come to the mathematical derivation in a bit. So you essentially have a lowering of barrier in forward bias and in reverse bias when you apply negative voltage to the metal what will happen is that a reverse will take place which means your depletion will now increase. Okay, because you are trying to push electron from here to there which is very difficult anyway so very little current will be there. So depletion will increase and what will happen is that your depletion width also will increase and depletion the barrier also will increase. So this this barrier also will become QVBI plus QVR the reverse bias that you are applying. So this will also reduce increase okay and then uh, that is your reverse bias condition okay. So now let us take the equilibrium condition only we will do an equilibrium analysis here. So let us take an equilibrium condition here this is your metal Fermi level those are in bias conditions but when current will flow I am talking about equilibrium condition here. So this is your equilibrium um, of course I am not drawing it very well but your Fermi level will be constant here and then your conduction band valence band will look like that this is an n type of semiconductor this conduction band and this Fermi level the difference will be constant in the neutral region this is your non neutral region in, in the sense that this is a depletion region there is a field here. So I told you in this depletion region you have positively charged if you plot the charge here then this is up to WD you have positively charged ions okay if you have positively charged ions you see the potential is changing here the field also will change there. So you do the same thing that we have done in uh, PN junction which is to solve the Schrodinger equation or the Poisson equation sorry 
d x v x v is the potential along this ok. This is electron energy so the potential will be the mirror image of this if you remember and this will be equal to the negative of the charge that is stored there. In this region from 0 to w d the charge that is stored is q and d that is the positive charge stored. So, there is a negative here that is the law and epsilon not epsilon s is the mid semiconductor dielectric constant. So, uh, if you recall then what you have to do is that d v by d x uh, is equal to f of x. So, I can say f of x the field actually the field will also keep changing here is equal to q and d by epsilon not epsilon s right uh, the field will be there. So, you have to integrate out uh, if you want to uh, this is d v by d x this is field right this is the field that is changing. If this is the field that is changing then uh, the field will actually keep changing here right. Uh, if you put this equation then it will look like d f by d x is equal to this right. So, the f x will basically vary linearly ok. The derivative of field is basically this. So, the field will vary linearly in terms of x ok. If you do and do an integration and then you do the boundary condition analysis what will you get? You basically have to integrate from 0 which is this position to w d which is this position ok. The over the depletion length only you have to uh, basically uh, do the integration and keep in mind the boundary condition is that at the end of this depletion at x equal to w d at this point your field will go to 0, field will become 0 because after that point the field is 0 the bands are flat at this point the field will go 0 till this point the field will be there. So, the field will be 0 f of x will be 0 for x equal to w d at the edge it will go to 0 ok. With that boundary condition you can find out the field and the field you know expression for field will look like f of x is equal to q uh, n d by epsilon not epsilon s into uh, x minus w d that is what it will look. Let me come to the news page. So, this is your metal Fermi level, this is your Schottky junction that is from this is equilibrium ok E c E f E v this is your phi b the Schottky junction that has formed this is your q v i the built in potential that has formed ok. I am talking about the depletion region here which is this w d. So, in the depletion region when you do that uh, I just told you right. So, the field f of x will look like q once you do the once you solve this integration once you solve this integration with the boundary condition that with the boundary condition that your field will become 0 at this point field will become 0 at that point you basically get um, f of x ok. You get the solution as f of x is equal to q n d epsilon not epsilon s into x minus w d. So, the field actually linearly decreases the field will actually linearly decrease there is a minus sign here actually I guess um, no that is fine the field will actually linearly decrease from x equal to 0 to x equal to w d. Of course, it will linearly decrease right because the charge is constant. If the charge is constant the field will linearly vary. If the field linearly varies the integration of linear function is quadratic. So, the potential will vary quadratically. So, of course, this is a parabolic function here just like in a p n junction ok. So, what it means is that the field will become the field will decrease from x equal to 0 from this point this is x equal to 0 point the field will keep reducing and the linearly and the field will eventually become 0 at this point at this point x because after that point the field is 0 the bands are flat. So, if I plot the electric field this is only the band diagram right if I plot the electric field with respect to x how will it look like ok. So, if I plot the electric field with respect to x how will it look like ok. So, this is electric field this is x. So, the field will become 0 at this point at x at w d the field will become 0 the field will be maximum field will be maximum at x equal to 0 the magnet I am talking about the magnitude the field will become 0 when uh, the field will become maximum when x is equal to 0 and that field value will be given by minus q and d w d by epsilon not epsilon s that is negative here. So, this point this point for example is this value which is f max ok and the field will reduce linearly from here to there just like in a p n junction except that there is no p side here ok. The field will actually reduce from this point 
to this point linearly ok. So, the field will reduce linearly. This is the maximum field that you can handle and it is negative in direction because you can see that if you put an electron here think of it as a rolling slope the electron will roll down here this side. So, the field is in this direction which means negative ok that is why the field is negative here ok. So, the field will change linearly and decrease eventually it will become 0 ok. And what is the potential that will change now? The potential will basically you have to do uh, integration of the field. So, I told you minus d v x by d x is equal to field ok and that is given by q n d by epsilon naught epsilon s x minus w d. So, if you integrate it out you will see that this is v x is equal to minus q n d epsilon naught epsilon s x minus w d you do a d x ok. You want to find out the actually the potential drop I mean you see the if this this potential will keep changing as a function of x at any point x the potential will keep changing, but I want to find out this potential drop total drop which means I want to find out the potential at this point minus the potential at this point. That drop is actually the the built in potential and the built in potential is given by phi m minus phi s that you also know, but I want to find out in terms of depletion and doping and other things right. So, you see I want to find out what is the drop the total drop here. So, I need to find out the potential here the potential here and minus subtract that ok. This is at a higher energy. So, this will be the lower potential this is at a lower energy this means it is a higher potential because potential and energy they have a negative sign q the charge of electron right. Energy is equal to q v this q is negative that is why ok. So, at any point x you can find out the potential, but our objective is the difference of these two potential at this side. So, if you do this it will eventually eventually come out to be the same as a p n junction thing only. So, v of x will eventually be minus q n d epsilon naught epsilon s uh, this will be x square by 2 minus x w d. So, you now put v of w d minus v of 0 what will this be that is the difference the potential difference that you will get ok. V of w d minus v of 0 means the potential at this point the minus the potential at that point ok. So, that you will do it will come out to be you have to put first w d here which means it will be q n d epsilon naught epsilon s if you put w d here it will be w d square by 2 minus w d square w d into w which will be minus w d square by 2 minus this will be everywhere 0 0 it will be 0 0. So, what will come out to be is that the built in potential will be equal to q this negative will go n d w d square by 2 epsilon naught epsilon s. It is like the same expression for junction built in potential in a p n junction if you remember ok. So, essentially in a semiconductor metal junction also just like in a p n junction it is basically like a one sided p n junction with one side being metal there is no p type here that is all basically ok. In p type there is another potential drop that happens no. So, essentially this built in potential that you have just from the derivation that we had done can be written as q n d doping w d square by 2 epsilon naught epsilon s and the field keeps changing from this point to this the depletion point here. The field is maximum here at this point and that field is given by q n d w d by epsilon naught epsilon s ok. So, you see these are very important parameters that we have talked about here if your doping increases what will happen if your doping increases your depletion actually will reduce Do you know if your doping increases your depletion will reduce, uh, but your so this will if your doping increases this will reduce, but this will increase eventually the field will increase at this point if your doping increases ok. If your doping increases your field will eventually increase ok. Now, these are the two things that we should keep in mind very 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 well ok very very well and you remember I will we'll come to this very this this gap this gap is actually E c minus E f E c minus E f here see the E c minus E f gap is different here and the E c minus E f gap is different here this is huge this is phi b the E c minus E f gap actually is phi b here and the E c minus E f gap keeps decreasing 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 eventually it becomes here constant and then it becomes constant here because there is no change here no field here. So, I will call this E c minus E f at bulk bulk as in like deep inside the semiconductor and that E c minus E f is actually given by k t by q from Boltzmann equation ln n c by n d 
and assuming 100 percent ionization. So, N d is equal to the free electron concentration N naught which is the equilibrium N naught concentration the same as N d ok. So, N c minus N c by N d this is your conduction when you know in the Fermi level difference here. So, you now see this Schottky barrier height phi b is actually this built in potential q v b i plus this gap here which is k t by q n c by n d. Okay. So, your built in potential actually is and this is this q n d w d square by 2 epsilon naught epsilon s plus k t by q ln n c by n d. This is your Schottky barrier height. This Schottky barrier height is this. Okay. So, you keep that in mind there. Uh, with your doping, this will not change so much because this is still given by phi m minus phi s uh, in the sense that this metal uh, or semiconductor work function will keep uh, reducing with higher n type doping. So, this difference will slightly start to become smaller. So, the built in potential is slightly become to sm start smaller when your doping increases. Okay. Okay. So, this is your now we have got the expression for built in voltage, now we have got the expression for field, we have got the expression for the, the total short key barrier height. So, these are good things that you have learned. Okay. Now, you might also want to do some you know uh, numerical for example, to actually gain understanding of how these things are working. Uh, if you, you might be given the doping for example, you might be said that I have a semiconductor here. I have a semiconductor, say n type semiconductor, I put a metal here. The metal forms a short key barrier height of say you know uh, 0 point um, say 3 V. This is the short key barrier height that has formed. So, you can immediately think that this barrier height is 0 point 3 V. Okay? This is like this. Okay? And now, suppose you are given the doping as N D equal to for example, uh, 10 to the power 16 centimeter cube and your conduction band density of states N c is always given say this is 3 into 10 to the power 19 per centimeter cube. I am just telling you an example epsilon s for silicon is say 11 point you know 7. Then can you find out the uh, the built in potential here? Yes, I can find out the built in potential first I have to find out the depletion. How will you find out the depletion actually? That is very important. To find out the built in potential here work functions are not given. Okay, You need to find out q n d w d square by 2 epsilon naught epsilon s. So, epsilon naught epsilon s you will have here epsilon naught is vacuum dynamic dielectric constant n d is given here you only need q you know only you need w d you do not know w d. You also want to find out the maximum field for that also you need n d w d by epsilon naught epsilon s. You see w d is there how will you find out w d now? That is a very relevant question. Okay, This is your w d. How will you find out w d? So, uh, you see your conduction band here this is E c minus E f and that difference we know that difference we know. right? Um, how will you know this difference E c minus E f this difference? Because this doping is given n d this n c is given this particular difference this particular difference that you find out will be given by k t by q which is um, 0 0.026 ln of n c by n d right. So, this will be 3 into 10 to the power 19 by 10 to the power 16. So, this will be 0 0.026 into ln of 3000. Okay. So, you find out the value once you find out that value you know this gap no you know this gap. Now, you you also know this you also know the short key barrier height is 0 0.3. So, you subtract this quantity from this. So, if you subtract 0 0.3 E v which is this minus this quantity whatever that quantity is I do not know it may be 0 0.1 whatever right you can calculate that value. So, what you will get after you subtract that out is that you will get this value. Once you know that value you can you know this everything you know you do not know W d. So, you find out W d. So, you will find out the depletion with suppose it comes out to be 200 nanometer I am just giving an example. Then you just use that here to find out the field and this value of the the built in potential is of course, obtained by this minus this. Okay. So, there is that way you can solve the numerical problems excuse me that way you can solve the numerical problems for your uh, metal semiconductor junction. Now, this 
is a metal semiconductor junction right there is another kind of metal sem what if you have to ask another question suppose I have a metal here Fermi level so this is your vacuum level so this is your phi m for example what if I have a semiconductor such that the conduction band is here the valence band is here and the Fermi level is here and type doped it is also n type doped now the Fermi level is below the metal you see the Fermi level is below the metal so the metal will give electrons from here to there the metals will keep giving electron the metal will keep giving electrons until the Fermi level comes up and balances with the it becomes equal with the metal okay so what will happen is that at the junction and this is a different kind of junction by the way because the because the the work function of the semiconductor this is actually larger than that of the metal this is your electron affinity so uh, what will happen is that electrons will be given donated by the metal to the semiconductor and because it is giving electron this part will have an excess electron because they are coming no and that is why that part will have something called accumulation accumulation as in electrons from metal have come and accumulated here and the Fermi level will rise up so how will it look you know eventually it will eventually look like this so it will the Fermi level will be basically be balanced the Fermi level will eventually be balanced and uh, okay far away from the junction far away from this is Fermi level far away from the junction the conduction band the valence band they will be same with respect to the Fermi level so this difference will remain the same this difference will remain the same okay far from the junction but I told you you fix this point it was initially the conduction band was here if you remember and the valence band was here right so what will happen is that it will go like that it will go like that okay the conduction see the Fermi level is actually now on this Fermi level this is the Fermi level is actually going on top of the conduction band because the conduction band is this blue one and the Fermi level is this red one for example okay this is going so the red Fermi level is above the conduction band at this point so this point will have a huge excess carrier of electron because the conduction band is above the Fermi level or sorry Fermi level is above the conduction band which means you see you see think it very carefully the Fermi level which is ideally below the conduction band has become above the conduction band now is the conduction band has come down here there is a huge accumulation of actually electrons here like an electron gas okay and this thickness is very narrow because lot of that lot of a huge carrier of electrons can be generated by a small change in the conduction band okay so this is accumulation region you do not find out any accumulation depth here because it is only a couple of nanometer or something it is very thin okay and you see electron from here can easily go here and electron from here can easily come here no barrier so for this kind of contact if you plot i versus v you will get a linear contact like that so this kind of a junction is called ohmic junction or ohmic contact so what we learned here is that to form an ohmic contact your metal work function should be uh, smaller than the semiconductor work function only then the semiconductor will come up like this and will form an ohmic contact so ohmic contacts are formed when metals have low work function low work function and if metals have high work function then you form a short key short key sort of a junction okay so this is about n type right similarly for p type it will be opposite actually so for example if you have a Fermi level here okay um, this is the vacuum level for example and suppose I have a p type semiconductor suppose this is my conduction band uh, let me draw it a different way suppose I have a this is Fermi level here so suppose this is conduction band this is valence band and suppose I have a Fermi level a p type dope no Fermi level is here what will happen then in n type semiconductor if the Fermi level is below the conduct uh, the metal Fermi level you will form an ohmic contact just now we saw in p type it is opposite if the Fermi level is below the uh, the Fermi level of the semiconductor is actually lower than the Fermi level of the metal then you will form a short key contact why because a short key contact in the p type uh, will be formed on the valence band not on the conduction band side so in this case the what will happen is that uh, you know this uh, the Fermi level here will have to balance out here right the Fermi level will have to balance out here which means essentially this will give out holes to this you can think of it like that it will give out holes to this it this Fermi level will come down and far away from the junction the Fermi level conduction band valence band everything has to remain similar so what will happen eventually is that it will look like this the Fermi level is constant everywhere and your valence band will have to be maintaining the same distance with uh, Fermi level okay forget the vacuum level now vacuum level will bend accordingly okay mm -hmm. and this is your suppose conduction band 
this is a formula this is p type semiconductor and it will bend like this okay it will bend like this okay so this barrier that has formed is the short key barrier phi b this is your short key barrier with the because this is now hole conduction this is hole holes will try to come holes will try to go right so this barrier is the short key barrier and this barrier is the short key barrier for holes and unlike in n type semiconductor this is not that straightforward to calculate it's still given by the metal semiconductor work function difference sort of thing but there is a more there is more to it actually uh, you know because this gap is given by this band gap this is the band gap of the semiconductor is you know minus this okay so it's the given by the band gap of this minus this and what is this this is basically the band that has happened okay so p type semiconductor ke liye for p type semiconductor to form ohmic contact it will be opposite so this has formed a short key contact right a p type semiconductor you formed a short key contact ha by having um, you know metal whose work function is lower than that of the you know um, the the semiconductor work function to form an ohmic contact the metal needs to come the metal needs to have a much larger work function much larger work function only then only if you have a very large uh, work function of the metal if the metal work function is like this okay this is ef m okay only then you will be able to form an ohmic contact how because if you have a metal work function which is like this then suppose i am drawing the metal work function like that not not drawing here i'm just drawing a metal function from here and the conduction band is here the valence band is here and the fermi level is here only then it will only then when you form a junction how it will look like is that this will come here okay and then your conduction band valence band will look like this this is a valence band this is your conduction this is a conduction band this is a valence band sorry actually it has to match up accordingly so your conduction your formula level is this one formula level in the semiconductor this is your valence band okay and the valence band will bend like this the conduction band will bend like this same band gap of course so you see the holes here will have no barrier to move here holes will have no barrier to move this will give you an ohmic contact to make an ohmic contact you need a large work function of the metal because metals with work function very large work function are difficult to find so making a p type contact becomes generally more difficult if the band gap also becomes large so the wide band gap metals met semiconductors have very little difficulty in forming a in forming actually a good ohmic contact okay so you remember on the n type we can form short key and ohmic okay similarly we can form on p type also we can form ohmic and short key type contact two types of contacts are there uh, we discussed the depletion and the built in potential case by taking the example of the n type semiconductor but similar things can be done for p type semiconductor uh, numericals can come for that okay the, so we know the built in potential expression we know the electric field expression we know the the semiconductor the, the short key barrier height equation uh, now i told you that the current flow will be obstructed because of the short key barrier height if you have an ohmic contact then carrier, car carrier flow will not be obstructed so it's a linear contact so in the next class what we will do is that we will try to uh, you know we'll end up the class here in the next class what we will do is that we'll start with the equation for current voltage characteristics for a short key type contact so for oh ohmic type contact it's just linear iv it's like v equal to ir right but when you have a short key barrier we'll take the example of n type semiconductor when you have a short key barrier then i qualitatively told you that in forward bias and reverse bias how the iv will look like the reverse characteristics the forward turn on i qualitatively told you but we shall derive that quantitatively okay we shall derive that quantitatively and we'll see why and how that short key type behavior comes from in a mathematical well mathematical approach okay it will look very similar to a pn junction but not exactly identical to a pn junction so once we know the current voltage characteristics of short key barrier diode okay we can compare that quantitatively with a pn junction diode and we'll compare which one is better for what application okay from the real world point of view okay so all these things we will take up immediately in the next class okay thank you for your time